Hello there everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to just be wrapping up the Space Marine Codex reviews. Um, I've done reviews of most of the Force organisation. I haven't done Elite Heavy Support and Flyers I believe it is. So we're going to just look at a couple of highlights within those sections and then do a general sum up for the Codex. Uh, hopefully getting the first battle report played in a couple of days for this channel and I've also um, got a few personal matters to attend to and I've got um, the Chaos Space Marine and Grey Knight Codex is coming out so with with a lot going on I've decided to wrap this up in sort of one video even though normally I'd have done probably two to cover these sections I thought I would just wrap it up in one video be concise about it just pick out the highlights and go from there it's also a little experiment to see what uh, you guys um, who are viewing the channel think uh, of the format you know would you prefer me to be a bit more concise would you prefer me to go to the elite section and go these are the two highlights um, this unit's got worse than it was this unit's got better etc or would you like me to go through every unit as I've been doing in a detailed uh, manner and that that feedback in the comments will let me make the future codex reviews better maybe in time for me to do the chaos and grey knight ones uh, which again i'll be experimenting on the type of video i'm doing and uh, it's all about the feedback likes etc that i get from them subscribers i get from them and it'll show me what you are preferring so we'll get straight into it so the first thing we had done as i said was the elite section so there, there's a lot of choice in the elite section there's loads of choice from single characters like the Primaris Ancient, um, Apocry 3s I believe are in here, yet yeah, they are um, company chaplet, uh, champions to units obviously like company veterans, aggressor squads, terminator squads, there's like four types of terminators now because Tartaros and Cataphracti are in here, there's Vanguard and Stern Guard veterans, all the patterns of Dreadnoughts, it does, it does go on somewhat, um, not in a bad way, obviously the more choice we have the better, so n no arguments there. So the ones I wanted to just um, pick out a little bit, number one was the Apoc 3, um, a really cool idea and bit of background that I think a lot of people really like, um, but not really a model you saw on the battlefield very often. The Blood Angels had a better version with the Sanguinary Priests, it's also the model was quite old, uh, whereas now obviously we've got a new Primaris Apocryphy model which looks brilliant. Um, and I think the rules are really good now. Um, they've got four wounds, so they are a proper character, they can hang around for a good amount of time, so he could be your second, H uh, well he's in the elite choice, but you know, your second leader. Um, without much trouble, he's got three attacks, you know, he's not he's not some soft target. Uh, he's armed with basic stuff, bolt pistols, chainsaws, frag and crack grenades, and they shall know no fear. So he's only got one rule, which is his Narthium. Um, at the end of your movement phases, the Apocryphy can attempt to heal or revive a single model. Select a friendly chapter infantry or biker unit within three inches of the Apoc 3, so he's got to kind of hang around with them or at least hang between two different units. If that unit contains a wounded model, it re immediately regains D3 lost wounds. So that's the first option. You can regain lost wounds, but because it's D3, you can pick characters, centurions, uh, the new aggressors, uh, terminators. I mean, they've got two wounds now, so you know, help them as well. And they can get multi wounds back, which is really good. You know, if you really want to make a bit of you know old fashioned Death Star uh, unit, or if you want that unit of Centurions to survive longer, you can put him with them, and you know every turn they're getting D three wounds back uh, potentially, which is you know really quite good. Um, so the other option is if the chosen unit contains no wounded models, but one or more of its models have been slain during the battle, roll a D six. So this is for one wound models or you know, a, a, a unit that just happens to have taken no wounds over spill from the guy who's died. On a 4 plus, a single slain model is returned to the unit with one wound remaining. If the Apoc 3 fails to revive a model, he can do nothing else for the remainder of the turn, shoot, charge, fight, etc. as he recovers the gene seed of the fallen warrior. So you've also got the chance to actually bring people back. So another bonus again for any unit, but again I think especially things like Centurions, put him there by them and they're recovering wounds every turn but on top of that he can actually bring them back to life kind of almost Necron-esque in that kind of survivability mode 
So I, I think he's he's um, really good, and he's actually a, a sniff in points. Actually, um, the Apocry three is fifty five points. None of his equipment costs anything, so he's basically fifty five points. Uh, unless the chainsword costs, I don't think it does. Does it? Chainsword. No, it's free. So yeah, he's fifty five points. Get him to hang around with your centurions and librarian, maybe. Maybe the librarians in there as well. Um. Yeah, I think he's a really good little upgrade. And like say, if you're doing pri my primary, so you don't mind having primary in your army, you know, the model's really cool, the new one. So I think he's something to look at. Uh, you've got the new Reavers and Aggressors. Um, I think the Reavers are a bit more subtle. Uh, if you look at their stat line, they're basically a Primaris Marine. Um, they've got a Bolt Carbine, which has less range, but has t Assault too. So you get two shots all the time, and obviously you can charge. They do have a really cool weapon called the Shock Grenade, uh, which doesn't inflict any damage, but any infantry that's hit by it is stunned until the end of the turn, so they can't fight Overwatch and subtract one from any hit rolls made for the unit. So that, that's quite nice, you know, because you, they can deep strike, they can just appear. So they can appear, throw that grenade, and um, potentially stun a unit, which is cool. But the weakness of it is it's a 6 inch range, and also you've got to appear 9 inches away, even with these guys. So there are it's, it's not incredible. Um, the aggressors have got a hell of a lot of firepower. If they stand still, they get to shoot twice. They have only got 18 inch range, so that's that's not going to happen all the time, but it can happen quite a lot of the time. They do have toughness 5 as well, which is really good. Uh, they've only got 2 wounds, um, which is which is quite interesting. So they're as tough as a Terminator in that way. They haven't got 3 or 4 wounds like you thought they might have had. Um, but they are actually reasonably cheap, so... Um, if I remember, the aggressors are 25, obviously, with their weapon, though, the 25 points, but uh, the auto ball storm gauntlet is 14. So they're about 40 points each. So they are quite expensive, but you've obviously got the top five, you've got the two wounds, um, and then the auto bolt storm gauntlet is assault six, but you've got two of them, so you've basically got 12 shots at 18 inches, strength four, AP dash damage one. So it's, it, it's just a load of bolter shots, but it's the sheer amount of shots you can potentially kick out um, with, with 12 shots each. If there's three of them, that's 36. If they shoot twice, that's 72 shots. Um, and they do actually have, as well, uh, the Frag Storm Grenade Launcher, which is at 18 inches as well, and it's D6 more shots of that. So actually, those three guys would average something like 83 shots, no, 81 or 82 shots a turn. So yes, not powerful weapons, but just the sheer output. If you have a friend who plays a lot of Tyranids, something like that, they will just melt a Gaunt unit in a turn. And I know you might think, well, that's not amazing. You know, it's only a Gaunt unit. But they also have the flexibility to attack bigger things because of the sheer volume of fire. They've got Toughness 5 vehicle, Toughness 6 vehicle with, you know, 8 wounds. These guys could strip it in a turn, potentially. So I think they're pretty good and, like I say, pretty, uh, pretty cheap for what they are. Um, potentially you could put them in a repulsor. Um, Terminators are unchanged really apart from the second wound, so they're still a solid choice. Uh, Terminators, how much are they? Um, 31 points, but with their Thunder Hammer Storm Shield. They're 47 and the Storm Shield. Can't see the Storm Shield. On here, so maybe that's implied as in there. Oh no, here we go. Five. So they they are they are a lot of points. They are about fifty points each. But you you've got to remember you're getting a terminator as it was before, but with two wounds. And the two wounds are more relevant now because there's less instant death. Uh, the two plus saves more relevant because you're going to get it more often. I know it gets minus. I get that, but you are going to get it more often. And they're doing three damage per thunder hammer hit. Just flat three damage, which is pretty horrible. So. Uh, you've got your Cashfly and Tartarus Terminators. Again, they're pretty much the same. Um, I think one unit's taken a little bit of a hit, Stern Guard, in the Elite uh, section. They're still really cool. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you're not being negative. They are good. They are a good unit. It's just they were so good before. <laughs> um, they've taken sort of what was required here, I suppose, in my view. But having said that... Um, they are only 18 points of model now, whereas I believe they were 25 before. And apart from the change of their ammunition, I believe they're exactly the same. The only other difference is that um, only two 
veterans may replace their special issue bolt gun with a heavy flame or an item from the special weapons, heavy weapons or combi weapons list and the sergeant can do it as well. Oh no, sorry, any space marine veteran can have a weapon for the combi weapon list. So actually they're unchanged apart from their special issue ammunition. Obviously you had all that flexibility before, all those choices, whereas now you've got a weapon that's kind of a mix of all of them. So it's still a really good weapon, it's got a 30 inch range, Rapid Fire 1, Strength 4, AP-2, Damage 1. So you've got the AP-2, which is quite nice. You've got the 13-inch range. So you have got some of the, the, the advantages there. The main reason I still think they're really good, though, is, like I said, they're 18 points, I think. Seven points less than they were. So you have a squad of them, that's 70 points off your old list. If you've got two squads of them, that's 140 points off your old list. You know, that's a big difference, um, especially if, you know, is Salamander Army with the Drop Melter Stern Guard unit. Um, I know a lot of other armies might have them, but obviously just the most thematic one would probably be Salamanders. Um, you know, it's a load of points saved. Uh, you can nearly afford another squad. Um, you can afford eight of them. You know, you're getting eight Stern Guard for free. So I think they're really cool. Dreadnoughts are really cool as well. I think the highlight for me, apart from the new uh, Redemptor, which is horrendous, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen a lot of, lots of weapon choices. Um, it's got 13 wounds, which is pretty beastly. Um, the one I'd like to actually highlight is probably, just because you've probably heard, heard maybe a bit less about it, it's actually the Ironclad. So the Ironclad Dreadnought comes in at 80 points, but by the time you've got its basic-ish weapons, it's Hurricane Bolters, only 4 points, Hunter Kilimitar would only be 6 points, Melt Gun 17, so you think it's going to be expensive, but actually it's probably going to be about 120 points all in, which is nothing considering it's toughness 8. So the same toughness as like knights and things like that. It's horrendously hard to hurt. And if you're strength 9, you're winning on 4s or worse. And it's got 8 wounds still. It's still got a 3 plus save. It's got 4 attacks in combat. Obviously you can arm it as you want. Obviously it's still short range. You're still putting it in a drop pod really, so you are going to have to pay for that drop pod. Um, and they're obviously not quite as good anymore in some ways. Drop in some ways they're exactly the same, but they're not quite as good in others. Um, but I, I think it's great, and it's got a rule called Wrecker, which is you can reroll hit rolls of one for this model when it fights if it is equipped with two melee weapons, which probably you're going to do anyway. The Hurricane Bolter is good now, obviously you're getting 12 shots at close range. But I, I think for that advantage, that's why I'd have I'd have the Hunter Killers on the top, two combat weapons, one with a metal gun or both of metal guns, or metal gun heavy flame, or whichever you want. And, um, and then you re rolling one's hits, he's even got effectively the old preferred enemy. So I, I think he's he's brilliant. Brilliant, really good. And tough to say with eight wounds, it's not easy to get through. Um, heavy support now. So a couple of, a couple of uh, units to highlight there. Um, Howl Blasters for one. Um, they are in the start set. Uh, they're really cool models, obviously they're releasing new models for them now. But there's three types of plasma rifle, all with their own advantages. They effectively go up a strength each time, while getting less shots each time. So they're Assault 2, Strength 6 or Strength 7, Rapid Fire 1, Strength 7 or Strength 8, and Heavy 1, Strength 8 or Strength 9. But they're all AP-4, they're all damage 2 on overcharge. And two of them also, if you roll a 1 to hit, it actually says it's slain after his shots have been resolved. So the cool thing is, if you roll a couple of 1s, oh, gutted, well... At least you're getting the shots off. Um, so I think they've got a lot of flexibility. Um, I like the Howl Blasters. Devastator squads are now cheap. Missile launcher Devastator squads are now nice. The crack missiles, as we've seen, are uh, pretty effective. So um, I think they could well be worth it. Heavy bolter squads even, perhaps. Centurions aren't too bad still. Um, they're not quite what they were, but they are still pretty good. The Grav Amp still strength 5, AP-3. AP and it's D3 damage if they have armor save characteristic of 3 or better, which most armies do. Four shots each, so they're still good. And they are cheaper. So the good thing is they've got worse, but you have seen a price drop. Um, the Hunter and Stalker aren't bad either. The Thunderfire is decent, although again, probably not quite as good as it used to be. But the Predators definitely want to highlight. Because you can go all last cannon, it's still pretty much as cheap as it used to be. It's a bit more expensive, but considering obviously it's now got 11 wounds and toughness 7 and a 3 plus save, no worries there. But it's also the firepower. So if you arm it with all last cannons, you get 4 strength 9 AP minus 3 D6 damage shots a turn. Obviously brilliant, brutal. But actually if you want to add in an auto cannon, I wouldn't take the heavy bolts, I still have sponsor and last cannons. But if you want to 
add in the orbit cannon, it's strength seven, AP minus one, damage three. So the AP's worse than strength's worse, but they're, they're still quite good. But actually, the damage three, it's averagely going to be about what the last cannon do. It just hasn't got the potential, but it's more reliable. And it gets heavy 2D3 shots. So you can average four shots and get anything up to six just from that one weapon. So if the rest of your army is quite good at taking on heavy armor, you can um, help that out a little bit. Vindicators uh, I want to highlight, and that, that's actually simply because there's no weapon destroyed anymore. That's the main thing. What used to happen to these guys, they maybe got immobilized, they've only got short range. Obviously destroyed much easier, unlike vehicles now. But now, not, not just is this Vindicator toughness 8, I think because of the siege shield, because like the Predator isn't, for instance, so I think that's because of the shield on the front. It's toughness 8, so it's so much harder to kill. But the main thing is that gun is going to keep firing, because there's no weapon destroyed, there's no stunned, anything like that. So I've got two Vindicators on my Iron Warriors army, and I'm so happy with them, because they're just going to sit there and keep pounding and pounding and pounding you. Um, as they say, the big guns never tire, so it, that's really cool. I, I really like that. I think it's brilliant, well worth its points. Uh, Lamb Raiders, as I'm sure you guys have probably seen, are so much more um, defensible now. Toughness 8 and 16 wounds with a 2-up save is horrendously hard to get through. Um, and they are gods of the battlefield, which they always were. I remember reading the White Dwarf when Land Raiders came out. I remember seeing that vehicle and thinking, oh my god, that vehicle's massive. I can't believe how big that vehicle is. Because um, at the time you had the old Metal Plastic Predator was you know, the joint biggest vehicle out there. So to see these Behemoths was amazing. And, and it's really cool to actually, after a long time, don't want to say how long ago I read that White Dwarf, um, they finally got rules that make you think, yeah, that's a Land Raider. Toughness 8, 16 wounds, 2 up save. They're really, really good. Uh, their firepower is great. Um, the, like I say, their toughness is brilliant. Their movement's good. The only like slight negative is they haven't got a uh, assault vehicle rule anymore. I know you can kind of assault out of all vehicles, but it, it's slightly different because you can't move, get out and charge as far as I'm aware. Now it's just move and then next turn, get out and charge. So although these guys can easily weather the storm for you anyway, that, that's one slight negative, but I, like I say, I'm picking really, I'm being a bit very picky. And finally, we've got the flyers. Um, there's the repulsor there, but I'm sure you've seen a lot about that. It is, it is as good as it sounds. It's, it's 400 points pretty much fully equipped, but it is horrendous. So um, it is better than the other Land Raiders. It, you know, it hasn't got the transport capacity at the same level. Absolutely awesome. So actually the flyers are actually probably the highlight of this codex. And the reason I say that is because they're all good. Um, and it's a bit easier, there's only three of them. Obviously the elite choices, there's about 15. But with the flyers are all awesome. They've all got their role. The Storm Talon's the cheapest, um, but it's still great. It's only about 140-ish, 150 points, which in modern day for a flying vehicle with a lot of firepower, which it does have, is actually amazing. Still got 10 wounds. It is only tough to six, but it's got 10 wounds still. So it takes a while to really, you know, you've got to get it down to five wounds before you start affecting it. And because it's got strafing run, which is add one, uh, add one to hit rolls for models in the shooting phase that cannot fly, so ground targets, actually you've got to get it down to two wounds before it really matters because um, the first negate, uh, the first knockoff of five wounds is negated by that. So actually, it's not going to hit on fours until you get down to two wounds, which makes it extremely reliable. Um, its weapons have got better as well, like the Typhoon missile launch is better now. A Sky Hammer is probably better. You've also got Stormhawk, uh, which is the same sort of thing. It's toughness seven, though, so you get a bit of extra toughness. But it has a bigger array of weapons than the Storm Talon. It's obviously reflectively more expensive. It's about 200 points. But the firepower it can throw out is horrendous. And this one gets add one to shooting flyers. So you have one Storm Talon, one Stormhawk, or two Storm Talons and a Stormhawk, which would be uh, probably about 500 points. But the three of them together, the firepower would be horrendous. You can deal with stuff on the ground, you can deal with flyers. Um, very good. And finally, you've got the Storm Raven, which is tough as seven, 14 wounds, three plus eight, so very, very tough to kill. Its weapons, again, have probably, if anything, got better. The hurricane bolters on the side are horrendous when you think that that's 24 shots at close range. Storm strikes don't run out anymore, so you just keep firing them all game, and they're damage three. Um, they're, they're really, really good. So the Storm Raven will set you back again a lot of points. As you know, you look at about 250, but for, for what it does, it's, it's brilliant. So there, there's some of the highlights, and, and a couple of maybe low lights, you could say. Uh, from the new Space Marine Codex, Elites, Heavy Sports and Flyers. That's kind of a whiz through. Now, 
when I, if you want to leave your comments on what you thought of that video compared to the other videos if you've seen them where I slowly methodically go through every unit. I don't mind doing either, I'm perfectly happy doing both and I might even mix it up and, and, and decide each codex which I'm going to do. Um, but let me know which you prefer in the comments. Um, like I say, whichever videos get the most comments, the most likes, I'm more likely to go with. Uh, one sort of disclaimer there is that even if I do do the quicker version, it won't be as quick as that normally. I just wanted to get this codex finished so you could you guys could see the videos. Um, it would normally be probably um, two, two, three, two slots of video, but not ones as big as those elite and heavy support sections. It would be more the three flyers, the five fast attacks I think there is, um, and the four decade transports or something like that in a video, maybe even only two of them. So although it would be quicker, it wouldn't be uh, quite as rushed. I just thought I could get them all in in this video. Uh, so let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of the Space Wing Codex. Um, I think it's brilliant. I think it's superbly made. The artwork's incredible. I love that front cover. There's loads of rich um, painting tips and background to look through. Um, I think the Space Wings have got better. I think looking at their um, options. I mean, I think just adding the Primaris gave them that elite option if you wanted to run a really elite army, kind of like Eldar running Wraith Guard. Um, you know, if you want to do a really el elite Eldar army, you either do Aspect or Irondon and do the Ghost Warriors. It gives you that option of Space Marines. Apart from just doing a Terminator army, you can do Primaris. But it also adds tactical flexibility to put Primaris into your other armies. And partly because the chapter tactics, partly because the amount of relics and the amount of stratagems and etc. But just because of the sheer volume of units and... I don't know that I could pick out a unit in that codex that I think is bad, that I think is badly pointed or doesn't have any use. There might be ones that I think are better, but none that are terrible. This is the most flexible codex, which is very appropriate. They are space marines. They have the most choice, most flexibility. You can make any army you want, and it will be good. You can make a flyer army, still do a drop pod army, like a lot of people used to, um, a rhino rush army, an, an infantry army. You know, If you have Imperial Fist Doctrine, um, by... Um, a fortification or two just to make your infantry a bit better protected and just line up Devastators, Centurions, Tactical Marines, Stern Guard and just have like a unit ready to carry out like a couple of Dreadnoughts and you'll blow people away. Um, there aren't many that will compete with you really. So yeah, um, let me know what you think of the review, let me know what you think of the Codex. Um, I will be reviewing the Chaos Space Marine Codex and Grey Knight Codex next week, I get them in two days, um, no three days from my local Games Workshop and I will be doing some reviews in there. Like I said, I'll mix up the videos again so you guys can let me know what you prefer, and I will see you all then when we do the reviews. Thanks for stopping by.